South Carolina was one of the best college football programs from 2011 to 2013, but since then, they have fallen off the map in a gauntlet SEC. Along with sharing the state with Clemson, South Carolina right now has more questions than they have answers. And what really makes it worse is that Clemson has been the most dominant program arguably in college football since these glory days from 2011 to 2013. And even this year, Coastal Carolina had an incredible season. So it really only makes things worse for South Carolina Gamecock fans. And in a COVID world where nothing is a guarantee, South Carolina decided to pull the trigger earlier this season and get Will Muschamp out of there, which is good news because there will be change for South Carolina. But what type of change will that be for Gamecock fans? That remains to be seen. I mean, South Carolina fans care about their football team. They spent a million dollars on a gold chicken to put outside their stadium. They care. And speaking of which, the team plays in Williams Bryce Stadium, which is right in the center of the capital of the state. And that place can get loud. When Jerude Sandstorm is playing and everybody is waving their white towels, the energy is unmatched there. So how can a college football program go like this from the top of the sport now to our the bottom. Well, you will have to find out in today's downfall of the South Carolina Gamecock football program. But before I begin, I would really appreciate it if you guys took the time to hit that subscribe button for me, hit the notification bell, and leave a like. This video took a lot of time and research to make it all look good for you guys, so I would really appreciate it. Despite being one of the premier programs in the past 10 years, South Carolina does not have a lot of history with their football program. They had only won one bowl game in 1994 in their history, and had only one 10-win season in program history as well. Well, but 1999 is where I want to start, and that is when former Notre Dame head coach Lou Holtz took over after being in retirement as a commentator. Now he took over a 1-10 team, and his first year they actually went 0-11, but the next two seasons after that, they won 8 and 9 games and beat Ohio State back-to-back -back times in the Outback Bowl. Yes, they won back-to-back -back in the Outback, and USC turned around and Holtz was winning. But this did not last because the school finished 5-7 and seven in their next two seasons, and then 6-5 and five in 2004, and in 2005 the school went on 3 years probation for violations during the Holtz era, and the school also had five major violations. Holtz retired, and the next guy that came after him changed South Carolina football forever. You know him for wearing his iconic visor on the sidelines, and iconically going shirtless in practice. Steve Spurrier was one of college football's best coaches ever. He won at Duke, he won a title at Florida, and in 1996, he left Florida for the NFL. And his time in the NFL was short with two seasons in Washington, but he came back to college football and it looked like he might even return to Florida, but he took his name out of the running because he thought he was already there too long to begin with. So he was looking for a different job, but he decided to stay in the SEC and stay in the SEC East, and he took the South Carolina job right after Holtz left and signed a seven-year deal. Spurrier led the Gamecocks to a 7-5 record and an Independence Bowl appearance in his first season. He was also named the 2005 SEC Coach of the Year, and in 2006, he also had an 8-5 record and a victory over Houston in the Liberty Bowl. In 2007, the Gamecocks started the season 6-1, but would lose all of their next five games, and South Carolina posted 7-6 records in 2008 and 2009. But really, South Carolina football took off in 2010. And it was the run from 2010 to 2014 that put South Carolina football on the map forever. The 2010 team went 9-5. They lost to Cam Newton and Auburn, and if not for that, they could have done better. But they had the premier win of this program's history when they beat number one Alabama at home, and South Carolina fans are still talking about this win. The 2011 team was stacked. Now, if it wasn't for Marcus Lattimore getting hurt, they could have done so much better. They went 11-2. If you remember, this team had Alshon Jeffrey, Stephon Gilmore, but when Lattimore got hurt versus Mississippi State, it just derailed their season. But they still won the Capital One Bowl over Nebraska. And the 2012 team might have been their best team ever there. They got up to the number three ranking in the nation at one point. They started off the year undefeated, and then they had a huge victory over number five, Georgia. That got South Carolina to the number three ranking in the sport. Then, sadly, they went to LSU and lost a game where Connor Shaw threw a pick right at the end of the game, and this team really could have won a title. And then the next week, they lost to number three, Florida, and Will Muschamp. But that Georgia game did put them on the map. This team was stacked. They had Jadavion Clowney, Marcus Lattimore, A. Sanders, who was a slot guy, Damari Bird, Connor Shaw. Of course, right after they lost to Florida, they then played Tennessee and Marcus Lattimore got hurt again. Every time South Carolina was right on the brink of something, it just derailed itself. Now this team still finished the season very well. They won every single game they had left. They beat number 12 Clemson. They made the Outback Bowl and beat number 19 Michigan. And you remember the clowny hit, we all do. But it just really stinks for South Carolina fans. This was their best team ever in program history. But don't get it twisted because 2013 was still a great year for them. They even finished the season number four. But losses versus Georgia and they barely lost to Tennessee really hurt their season. Now they still had some great wins 
Hurricanes. They beat UCF, who had a very good team led by Blake Bortles. They also beat at the time number five Missouri that went on to the SEC championship game. And they even beat number six Clemson to end the season. But again, they were robbed of a New Year's Six Bowl. But they still beat Wisconsin in the Citrus Bowl to finish off the greatest stretch in South Carolina football history. It really sucks looking back though. This team was robbed of getting a New Year's Six Bowl. They were robbed of honestly getting a national championship game appearance. Every single time they got so close, it just didn't go their way, which really sucks to look back on. For a program like South Carolina, you know, they deserve to have those games that didn't go their way, go their way. But in life, it doesn't always work out like that. And sadly, that's what happened. You know, everybody remembers these teams. They had incredible defenses and a lot of NFL talent. They also had somebody like Marcus Lattimore, who was one of the best running backs in college football and could have won the Heisman. Now, after 2013, the 14 season, they won seven games and beat Miami in their bowl game. But 2015 started bad. And after going two and four to start off the year, Steve Spurrier resigned on October 12th of 2015, effective immediately. Now, a big thing that not many besides USC fans know about is that Spurrier was pretty disrespected by the trust. Trustees. They thought that they could win with anybody as their head coach. And it really wasn't Steve's fault that he left. He had some coaches on his staff that the board didn't want that were a big part of their defense. Their defensive coordinator and their defensive line coach recruited a lot of the great players that South Carolina had on their defense. And the trustees just didn't like how some of these dudes acted. And they wanted different faces around the program. And Steve didn't like that because he knew how important they were. So Spurrier decided to leave. And this really hurt South Carolina football, obviously. Now in his time, I'm there it sucks because like I said that 2011-2013 run they went 11 and 2 each year and they never made it to a New Year's Six Bowl game which is insane to think about and Clemson who they beat did before Spurrier was even there they only had one one million dollar donor who was Williams Bryce who the stadium's named after and when Spurrier left they had over 50. He made such a big difference, but the trustees got cocky and they thought anyone could come in there and obviously that didn't work. The team used to work outside of the stadium. Everything was run out of Williams Bryce. South Carolina was not a top of the line football program. They didn't have the money for the facilities. So there was really no reason for back in the day for them to put money into the football program because it just didn't win and it was just a waste of money. But when Spurrier left, they had built all new facilities and South Carolina just saw a bunch of money come in because of what he did for that program. But sadly, Spurrier was never there to use all of these new toys that they built for him because after he left, the Will Muschamp era began. And things only got worse for South Carolina. Now, South Carolina under Will Muschamp did enough to give you hope, but let you down when it mattered the most. Now, some of the options they had before Will Muschamp were Kirby Smart, Tom Herman, Justin Fuente, and Mark D'Antonio was actually a candidate there. He was a USC grad, and he only signed one-year deals at Michigan State. But the only issue was when Spurrier left, D'Antonio had made the college football playoff with Michigan State, so he decided to stay there. And then, Will Muschamp was number five on the list. Other guys were Charlie Strong, Chad Morris, and Lincoln Riley, but Will Muschamp was their guy. And it started off with a 6-7 and seven record in 2016. Now 2017, they won 9 games and they beat Michigan in the Outback Bowl. And then in 2018, they won 7 games but got shut out in the Belk Bowl. And then 2019, they went 4-8. and eight. That was not good. And then obviously, this season has been a disaster. They just finished 2-8. and eight. Muschamp was fired on November 15th. And now Muschamp is getting paid a ton of money by South Carolina just to sit there and do nothing. So, that's South Carolina for you guys. But what went wrong? Well, a lot went wrong. But something I do want to mention is that players and people who worked for Muschamp said that he was a great man of faith, hardworking, and would help people in any way possible. But the problem was he did not produce results. That was a big problem that led to his downfall. But there really are three key reasons to South Carolina's downfall under Muschamp. Number one was Muschamp built a culture that was not right for South Carolina. This is a unique problem, and I don't think he fully understood what it took to build a culture that was right to win in South Carolina. It excluded people from the facility like former players which led to a division between the Spurrier players and the Muschamp guys and that really leaked into the fan base and number two which led into that the division between the people at the facility the former players and the fan base was huge the Muschamp players and the South Carolina fans have a love-hate relationship there are guys the fans support and appreciate but there are many players who never developed a relationship with the fan base and just talk trash about how bad and unsupportive the fans were whenever they lost now some people believe it was the message that Muschamp said which was an us versus everyone everybody mentality and that may have unexpectedly included the fans when they would criticize the team for the lack of results and number three was there was no player development and bad player evaluation in the recruiting department there they need football people who are great talent evaluators and they do not need what they've had for the past five years
years. You know, the real difference between the Steve Spurrier era and the Will Muschamp era was that Spurrier did not put up with losing. In 2006, when South Carolina barely lost to Auburn, who was at the time number two, the fans clapped for the players as they walked off the field. And in his press conference, Spurrier said that he never wanted to hear fans clap again after a loss. While in comparison, Will Muschamp, after a loss, would talk about how his guys played hard and things will get better. The mentality was just different, and South Carolina fans could just not get behind this new mentality. Spurrier set a standard for the fans, and they expected this standard to be met by Muschamp, but it wasn't. And somebody that gets overlooked by the national media, but not by South Carolina fans, is their athletic director, Ray Tanner, who yes, is adored by bringing back-to-back -back College World Series championships to South Carolina, but his track record as athletic director is beginning to turn fans against him slowly because he allowed this mess to happen and to continue. But thankfully this year, he finally did something about it to fix the situation. Now, South Carolina does not have a lot of history, but they are in the SEC East, and they need someone who wants to be there. This is a divided fan base, and not by the fans dividing themselves, but by the fans in the must champ players. They need someone to come in and bring this community back together and help it heal. And South Carolina has found their guy. Shane Beamer is going to be the next head coach at South Carolina. His dad is obviously Frank Beamer. He worked hand in hand with Lincoln Riley. He's from Charleston. He's coached on all three sides of the ball, and he's really not living in his dad's shadow at South Carolina, which he would have been if he ever got the head coaching job at Virginia Tech. You know, Shane is not the most experienced guy, and he's never been an offensive or defensive coordinator, but I still have a lot of hope in what he can do. This is his dream job. He's going to take it very seriously, and maybe, just maybe, we can see South Carolina come back one day. The team still has Gunnar Stockton, a commitment for the 2022 class, the highest rated dual quarterback in that class. So if he can still come there in two years from now, things could very well get turned around. This is an incredible fan base at South Carolina. Williams Bryce Stadium is one of the loudest when they're rocking. And hopefully by then we can get fans back in full capacity. But until then, Shane Beamer is going to have a lot to fix to get this program back to where it was. He has to be a healer and he has to win. And will Shane Beamer get South Carolina back? We will see. So that will do it for today's downfall of South Carolina football. If you're a South Carolina fan, please let me know down in the comment section anything about South Carolina football that you want people to know about. And for me, again, if you could, leave a like and subscribe. It would really help me out. It took a lot of time to get this video together. So thank you for watching, everybody. I will see you in the next video. Peace.